So let's talk about exec, which is what everyone and his brother uses, except for some of us guys who are a little bit long in the tooth and have been doing this for a while. Let's talk about uh, our alternative. Sure. So uh, you may have noticed in my kitchen sink example, uh, when I used dynamic SQL, I didn't use exec. I used SPX Qt SQL. Uh, and I, I've had the long-standing assumption that SPX Qt SQL was better at promoting plan reuse than exec. Uh, but that may be like a lot of things we've talked about in this series, that may be less relevant in modern versions of SQL Server. It can depend on the query itself, uh, and in fact may not always be what you want. You can still some, suffer from certain symptoms of parameter sniffing when you're using plans, depending on selectivity and, and that kind of thing. So uh, sometimes you do want to recompile every time or, or have other options. Um, I use SPX with SQL for two reasons that don't really come down to performance, though a lot of people assume that they are different in performance. One reason is uh, built-in protection of SQL injection. Um, and note that sanitizing input isn't always possible. So let's take a quick look at an example. Now, uh, does this example involve uh, little bobby tables? Uh, it is quite related to bobby tables, yes. I should have actually <laughs> named the table bobby tables. That would have been uh, a little more funny. Yeah, uh, indeed. If you don't know what we're talking about, uh, there's a, a very funny geek-oriented, uh, nerd-oriented cartoon strip called xkcd.com and so they actually made a joke about SQL injection on this uh, yeah, comic it's, book. It's very so popular. Pretty it talks about a, uh, a student whose parents deleted the, uh, the student's table from the school's database because the school's website did not protect them from SQL injection. Okay, so if we look at the example I have here we have a, uh, a parameter that takes free form entry, let's say, from a, from a user. So they're, they're filling in uh, the string that they want to search for in a search form. And we're not sanitizing, we're not doing anything with this, we're just letting them set that value to whatever they want. Now, they could easily insert uh, escaped apostrophes and then a semicolon and then continue with uh, some other command. So they might uh, issue a drop table command. And one of the reasons why this is really a problem, because typically your users wouldn't have capability to perform drops and deletes and, and other things where you're actually affecting and manipulating the data. But when you're using dynamic SQL, uh, often what happens is privileges get escalated. So instead of dealing with every single table that someone has to access, they just give the, uh, the account that's running these queries sysadmin access or DBO or uh, something more elevated than they should have. So, that, so mm -hmm. this could be a real concern in those environments where um, security is kind of a, an afterthought. So um, we then plan to blindly append this string to our SQL and ultimately execute it. And if you try to find uh, comments or other characters, I can bypass that at different layers by uh, converting the string to uh, a var binary representation of the string. So if we take a look at this, and if we set the value to this big long binary string, which I obtained by doing this first, um, oops. Yeah, you're literally passing in. Uh, yeah, so you're passing in dangerous. something that looks like a var binary string, and it's going to be very hard for different layers of your application. And this is one thing I hear a lot. Well, I protect my uh, the strings that are coming into the database by, uh, you know, putting escape mechanisms or or putting in some kind of sanitization at the application level or at the middle tier, and it's not always going to mm -hmm. be able to interpret what this string actually is. So just something additional to be a little bit worried about. If you do that with uh, SP execute SQL, so here here is the what the string would look like. So I'm just um, I have to take this string parameter. I have to replace any uh, single quotes inside of it because a person could enter single quotes into a search form. They might be searching for Mr. O'Brien, for example. Um, but that will delimit the string. So now I have to deal with all this messy replacement. And then I have to wrap the outside of the string with double quotes to escape it. And then for column two, uh, this is an integer parameter. So I can't just append an integer to a string. And I, I have to deal with this convert and everything else first. So if we take a look at this, we can see that our query says where call one is equal to string, 
Um, and I'll have to take a look. I'm not sure. Anyway, you can envision you can yeah. envision how this could become a much more dangerous string than it really is. Um, and that and actually oh, this only works because I added the replace, which a lot of people don't think about. I've seen multiple multiple questions on forums and Stack Overflow where the string gets truncated because people didn't realize that if someone passed in O'Brien, uh, it's not going to work. So these these vulnerabilities exist out there today. This isn't uh, you know smoke and mirrors or anything like that. That's right. Yeah. So now, if we look at how we would do this with SP execute SQL, if you'll notice in this command, we have absolutely no uh, string concatenation. We have no replaces that we have to do. We just simply name the parameters. So where call one is equal to at param one and call two is equal to at param two, this is part of the string. In this simple case, it's very hard to justify why this is dynamic SQL in the first place, but imagine there's more complex stuff going on, like the table name is passed in, or the set of columns are passed in, that kind of thing. But for uh, anything where you uh, can parameterize a value, so in a normal SQL statement, this is something where you can use a param, unlike a table name, or a column name, or a server name, uh, values and constants that you're comparing to can be parameterized. So in this case, all we do is we send that whole string to SP execute SQL, and then we can pass in strongly typed parameters. So we don't have to deal with replacing single quotes. We don't have to deal with converting data types to something that's compatible to a string. We just pass the data types right in there. And uh, things like adding an apostrophe so that I can add a comment and, and add multiple queries at the end of that, that just becomes a completely independent string and does not get appended to the actual command. So it's much, much safer to use. Um, and that's why I use SPX Speed SQL and, and never use exec. Mm -hmm. so. Gotcha. Good stuff. All right. Well, and again, it's the kind of thing that uh, Aaron mentioned your, your mileage may vary according to the version you're using. So on some of the older versions, uh, there, there are other upsides. In, uh, for example, um, if you're on an older version of SQL Server, there is a feature that, that's been around for a while called plan guide substitution. And uh, uh, SP Execute SQL, again, is, is better at that on the, you say, the first version of SQL Server that supported that feature, SQL Server 2005. It's actually a little better at that than exec is. So there's, there's other reasons. But I, I think errands are, are definitely the, the, the salient ones that, uh, that you would want to pay attention right. to. Right. I'm not trying to speed up your queries. I'm trying to help you save your job or keep your job. That's right. Yep, let's let's be better professionals.